Hi, in this video we'll be learning how to write a recipe with Recipe Creator. More specifically, we'll be working with the Nav tab. The Nav feature is what allows DataMiner to click through multiple pages and automatically scrape the data. In order for the Nav feature to be available, you do have to add it to your recipe. This video will cover how to do that. So that said, let's go ahead and jump right in. So there are a few different methods of adding the Nav feature. The first one is simply the Easy Nav Finder. So if you click the button, and that will turn your mouse into, like, into a magic wand. And then you just simply want to hover over the next button and then hit N on your keyboard. And then just like that, DataMiner finds the link for the next page. You can actually test it by clicking the Test Here Link button. As you can see, we are now on page two, so that worked just fine. And then we can simply click Confirm, and then we're good to go. At this point, you can then run your recipe, and then, or at this point, you could then save your recipe and run it, and then you'll have the option to do next page pagination. We do have a separate video that wa uh, walks you through on how to run that. However, the Easy Nav Finder may not always be available or useful for every web page. If there's ever a scenario where you're having trouble with the Easy Nav Finder, go ahead and try the advanced settings. It's pretty much the same process, just with a, with a little bit more flexibility and power. So what you'll do is click the green Advanced Finder button. And again, it turns your mouse in, into a magic wand. So you want to hover over the next button, but this time you want to hit shift on your keyboard. At that point, Recipe Creator is now suggesting different selectors. In our previous videos, we will go more into what a selector is. For this video, you can pretty much, pretty much just kind of do some trial and error by clicking the different items. So if you see a page link, you give that a try. What we're looking for is data miner or a recipe creator to target or outline just the next page. So as you can see, a little too much is being highlighted. So let's try the A instead. As you can see, again, still too much is being highlighted. So let's try next. Ah, there we go. So as you can see, the next button is the only one being highlighted. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So we can simply click confirm. So at this point, again, the recipe is pretty much, or the nav's finished, so you can continue to the save tab. If you ever have trouble finding a selector, so if we do this again, and let's say we hover and shift, and you happen to shift over this little icon here, and you're not seeing any type of class for next, just simply click the parent button. That moves you up the HTML and gives you more to work with. So again, we can now see that next, and we can choose that. So that said, uh, those are kind of the two methods of using the, um, the easy nav and then the advanced. If there's ever a scenario where you cannot find a class for the next button, we do actually have an advanced advanced trick that should help. So if we go to a different page, you'll see that this website has the word next. We can actually use that in our selector. So if again, we do advanced settings, click advanced finder, and I hover in shift over that next button. As you can see, we now no longer have a class for next. We have just the A and the page link, and both are giving us too much to work with. So at this point, we can actually do an advanced trick that targets just the word next. So keeping this A, we're going to tell DataMiner to go after the A element, but specifically the one that contains the word next. So what we'll type is leaving the A, we'll do a colon, which is the two vertical dots, then the word contains, and then open parenthesis, the word next with a capital N and closing parenthesis. So now as you can see, we're once again targeting just the next page. So this one is good to go. So now we can hit confirm and you can then save your recipe. So this is if you ever want to target a piece of text on the page. So again, it goes after the A element, the one that contains the word next, and then it will click this. This also works for the arrow. So if you ever see like a greater than symbol, you can try that as well. However, the next is typically uh, the more common method, but you can actually use both of these across many different websites. And then finally, we have one other scenario where you might come across a page that doesn't have any next or previous button. This page is still definitely doable, but requires a little bit more manual work. So again, advanced settings, then we click the advanced finder button. And in this scenario, rather than doing the hover and shift process over a next button, we're gonna do the hover and shift process over the current button. So we'll, that is page one. So I'll hover and shift. And again, as you can see, we're not getting a lot here. Again, just the links are the A and the page links. So let's go ahead and try the parent button. Ah, so here, this is what we're looking for. 
it's the active button. So this is going to tell Recipe Creator that it's the active page, which is a good start, but we actually want the next page over, which is page two. So what we can do is in the input box, we can type. So after the word active, and your website might be slightly different. It could be dot current or a um, dot active or any sort of um, something along those lines. So it'll be dot active and then space and then a plus symbol. So that will actually shift um, over to the next element over, which is going to be the next page. But we still have to identify this element. So it's going to be plus. And then from our kind of investigating, earlier we saw that this started as an A. We did the parent button, and now we're at an LI. So keeping that in mind, we kind of have to go back down. So we say LI, oops, and then A. So we're now kind of, we started at the active, went up, over, and now we're going back down, taking us to the A element, which is where the URL is located and what's important for the next page process. So now that we have this, we can hit confirm. And then we once again have a working uh, selector for our nav. So again, this is um, just a few examples, um, but these should cover for most of the, the different sites you'll see out there. If you ever have any questions or any issues, definitely send us an email. Our email is support at dataminer.io. Um, but that pretty much wraps up the nav section. If, you, uh, if you're so interested in learning more, we recommend watching our other videos. I hope this one was helpful and thanks for watching. All right, bye.